this is one of London's great historic organs and tuning it in a way is a bit like going back in time. This organ sounds absolutely beautiful in this huge building. The way I tune is, um, there's two main sorts of pipes, there's flue pipes and reed pipes and I mean there's over 2,000 pipes in this organ I should think so I do not tune all the pipes every visit. So this has got, it's got a tongue here and I can knock this spring, this will have gone out of tune now because I'll have warmed it up by lifting it up, but I can knock this spring up and down to, to change the length of the tongue. These springs here, um, when I knock them up then it makes the tongue longer and that makes it go flatter and when I knock it down it makes it go sharper. So the organ was built in 1877 by Father Henry Willis and it's known to be one of uh, the best examples of his work at the time. He was known as just a master of organ building so it's kind of known as the, the Rolls Royce of organs because it's just so smooth in the way that you, you play it. That's partly due to the fact that it also has the Barker lever system which just makes it much easier to control. It was built for the space, so that's why it's such a, a beautiful sound because the acoustics were taken into consideration when it was placed where it was. And then the, the pipes are below the rose window which have these angels that are playing different musical instruments, so it's a beautiful kind of subtle reference to the fact that the organ is there. The organ was built basically to mimic an orchestra, so the stops that you'll see on the organ are very much in, in line with that, so you'll have like a trumpet stop or a flute stop. And I think of it also as kind of like the world's first synthesizer in a way as well, because you can create such a, a massive amount of different kind of sounds from one instrument. We have two ways of powering the organ. Um, in 2012 and 13, we got a big grant from Heritage Lottery Fund to restore the organ. With that came the restoration of our hydraulic system. So we're one of few organs that are left with a fully working water hydraulic system. And you can switch between that system or the electric blower, which is what most organs are powered by today. So the restoration happened in 2012 going into 2013. When I joined the chapel as music director, that was part of the organ project that came into being because of this Heritage Lottery grant. And so the organ was restored and then when it came back in, then the idea was that we create a program around it to celebrate the instrument. But when I joined, the organ wasn't there. It was actually in the workshop at Harrison Harrison's in Durham. So the first time that I met the organ, was in bits in the workshop and it was just incredible to kind of see there were thousands of parts some as small as like your pinky nail and just to like imagine that they then have to put all of that back together is just incredible and I remember there was one one day that I walked in and they had this this huge bathtub and it was full of um, warm water and fairy liquid and they were actually bathing the pipes before they put them back into the loft and I just thought that was such a beautiful thing. So here I, I run a programme, it's two strands, it's education and performance and they, they kind of feed off of each other. So in the education strand we run workshops for primary school children, we have individual organ lessons for teenagers, we have an organ scholarship for someone who's just graduated from university. We also work with university students in the creation of new works for organ and they're teamed with an organist in creating those new works. And then we also have the performance Strand, which is the recital series and then kind of the the sort of at the heart of the program is organ reframed with all the new commissions. As part of my programming for the organ at Union Chapel I've always been really aware that you have to embrace the historic repertoire but you also have to help it to grow. 
Oregon Reframe started in 2016 and the inspiration behind the festival is that I'm also a composer and performer myself and started writing for the organ back in 2006 and just could not believe the scope of the instrument and that actually you can create sound on the organ that you can create it acoustically but it sounds electronic and that just was such an amazing thing and so zooming on to me being at the chapel and I really wanted to kind of share that with everyone else that this is such an incredible instrument with so much scope and so now um, Organ Reframe commissions all new works for the festival. We're contributing to that repertoire and making sure that the organ isn't forgotten about and it's moving along in the times like other instruments are that are more accessible. So it's about giving you know composers time and the space to actually experiment with the instrument and write new new challenging works and to change their minds about the organ like my mind was changed but also to change perceptions to the audience of what the organ is and how first tell an instrument it is. Sadly we had to close our doors in March and the organ program was you know in full swing but thankfully we've managed to move a lot of our education stuff online so the students that we have the individual students are still continuing to learn do their lessons online with a piano at home um, we've also done notation workshops online and we're continuing to look at how we can basically tailor each of our workshops so they can be online if they need to or we can then adapt back to having people in the chapel social distanced but it's really really nice that we can reach, you know, audiences that we've never had before because we've now got this digital platform. I feel incredibly honoured that in my position I'm here to look after this instrument which is a true historic gem and really is the heart of the chapel. <laughs>